Now, President Ekofuado says the forests continue to be one of Ghana's most important resources, but regret there is a substantial decline forest cover over the period. At the launch of the 2022 edition of the Green Ghana Day under the theme Mobilizing for a Greener Future, the president called for a concerted effort to combat this menace. And offer sources of livelihoods to many of our people. Globally, some 1.6 billion people depend on forests for their livelihoods. And in Ghana, some 85% of the population rely on forest resources for subsistence to satisfy their socio-cultural needs. Despite their importance to our existence, our forests are depleting at an alarming rate. Some 80 years ago, half of the Earth's surface was covered by forests. Today, with an estimated forest area of 4 billion hectares, forests cover less than 30% of the world's surface. In the last three decades alone, the, the world has lost 1 billion and 37 million 846,602 acres of forest, more than 10% of the current total forest area. More troubling is the current data which says that globally we're losing 150 acres of rainforest every single minute, 200,000 acres a day, and 79 million acres a year. And this is just rainforest. Here in Ghana, we've lost some 100,000 acres of natural forest in the last decade alone. Our timber industry, who generated jobs for thousands of people, is suffering. The Odum, Wawa, Mahogany, Sapele, and several other wood species of this timber industry are also depleting at an alarming rate. Apart from their economic value, Forests are home to most of the Earth's terrestrial biodiversity and crucial to our fight against climate change. The climate crisis is said to be reaching a tipping point. We are advised by the experts and the teachings of the Paris Agreement of COP21 to keep global temperatures below 1.5 degrees Celsius. The Green Ghana Initiative seeks to create a collective action towards restoration of degraded landscapes in a country, mitigate climate change and inculcate in the youth the values of planting and nurturing trees and the associated benefit. Land and Natural Resources Minister Samuel Abu Jinapo says 20 million trees are being planted this year and it forms part of an aggressive afforestation program to restore the lost forest cover of Ghana, which contributes to the global effort to fight climate change. The Forestry Commission has developed 87 hectares of rosewood plantation in eight forest districts, namely Tamale, Bupe, Bole, Yendi, Tintampo, Sunyane, Ofinso, and Nkawie, as part of measures to prevent the extinction of this precious wood species. The Forest Plantation Development Fund, on its part, has cultivated some 407 hectares of forest in the Ashanti, Bono, Eastin, Oti, and Volta regions. The fund is also supporting the protection of river bodies. Under the Forest Investment Program, we have secured a 7 million US dollars World Bank loan to support private inf investment in forest plantation. Some 85,000 hectares of forest will be planted under this scheme. Forest investment program. We have secured a 7 million US dollars World Bank loan to support private investment in forest plantation. Some 85,000 hectares of forest will be planted under this scheme. In October last year, Mr. President launched the National Alternative Employment and Livelihood Program, which, among others, seeks to reclaim degraded mine lands and return them to viable agricultural lands. And under the Ghana Landscape Restoration and Small Scale Mining Project, 
we are pursuing further reclamation efforts to add green cover and provide employment and income for local communities. Ladies and gentlemen, and to seal the future of our country's forest cover, last year, Mr. President launched the Green Ghana Project to create enhanced national awareness of the necessity for collective action towards restoration of degraded landscapes in the country, inculcate values of planting and nurturing of trees in the youth, mitigate climate change, and beautify our communities and environment. President Akufuado led us on this maiden occasion to plant over 7 million trees. And this morning, the President is here again to kickstart today's nationwide tree planting exercise and lead us to plant at least 20 million trees, 10 million of which will be planted in forest reserves and the remaining 10 million in off forest reserves, including watersheds, boundaries, office compounds, and sites within communities such as parks, roadsides, homes, farmsteads, churches, mosques, schools, and other significant areas. Given the very ambitious nature of our target, we have had to mobilize 20 million citizens. So joining us uh, with more on this is Awula Sewa, the coordinator of Eco Conscious Citizens Ghana. Thank you very much, Awula, for joining us. What do we know to be the impact of what we did last year? I, I would like if you could. Uh, hello. I, I, I like, it's so faint. I'm sorry about the okay. um, interference. Is, is it, could you repeat okay. the question first? Great. I I'm asking uh, what has been the impact of what we did last year in terms of planting trees, uh, in which the minister makes us understand that we planted 7 million trees. Did you say the impact of planting last year? Exactly. What we did last year. What has been the impact? Well, I mean, it has brought awareness. People are understanding the importance of the the um, environment and planting trees. What we are not 100% sure how, how many of the trees actually survive. Because as you know, we can't just plant the trees. They need to be nurtured and uh, taken care of and protected from, you know, ghosts and other um, interferences. But I think on the whole, it was very well received. And I think it does, it has, it's a brilliant initiative. And uh, I think it went relatively well. Mm. Uh, so, having done that, by now we should be giving an update as to how the trees we planted are doing. Isn't I'm that sorry, the case? The line is very bad, so I can barely hear you. I, I, I will, uh, can you hear me now? A little better. Okay, so I'm trying to find out from you that, like you said, um, we should know how the trees we planted last year uh, are doing. And I'm asking, wouldn't it have been proper for the ministry to have let us know? how those trees are doing even before we move on to plant the 20 million we are looking at this year? I mean, that would have been good because what you normally do is learn from, from what has taken place. You learn lessons and you build upon it. So I'm sure that um, that may have been communicated to those at the very um, core. I can't say that I know the answer, but yes, that would have been good. And probably it has been done, but I may not be aware of it. Because I do know that questions have been asked, legitimate questions have been asked about how many, the proportion that survived, we were told 80%. I'm not quite sure how that figure was arrived at, but we were told 80%. But for today, we are supporting the initiative. But what we are saying is that it's all very good to be planting trees and hoping to plant 20 million trees in a year. But for us, what is also important, if even not more important, to preserve the existing forest. We can't be on one hand planting trees and on the other hand supervising the destruction of our forest reserves. So we are also campaigning for the protection of Atchewater Forest and for ensuring that the EI-144 is revoked so that we do not declassify any part of Atchewater Forest. Because the reason why Atchewater Forest became a protected area was precisely because we need it. We need this. Atchimota is the lungs of Accra. We need our lungs. So we are saying that Greening Ghana is a fantastic initiative. But to show commitment, we need to preserve our existing forest. Because what we are supposed to be doing is adding to our forest, not on one hand planting trees, and on the other hand declassifying 
forest and not preserving the existing forest we have. So that mm. is one point we are making today. And we'll continue making until EI-144 is revoked. I will, if we do today's planting, we would have done 27 million trees. Uh, what do you think we can do to improve on this exercise going forward? I think to improve on the exercise, it's a question of letting people understand that, you know, planting a tree is like having a child or having a pet. You don't just have a pet, enjoy it one day and then decide you're fed up. It takes uh, a little bit of nurturing. It takes a bit of your time. But you understand that it's for, the, it's for your own well-being, the well-being of the country, and for generations yet to come. So there needs to be some amount of commitment. Mm. And when we are planting trees in areas that are, you know, have uh, goats and other um, animals around, we need to enclose them. So that's what we need to do. Not just plant trees when cameras are there, but to be clear that these trees need to be nurtured, need to be protected until they properly take root. Otherwise, they're just planting trees and the survival rate may not be as high as we'd like it to be. Okay. Thank you very much, Awula, for your time here. This is the be joining us the desk. Moving on to other stories. The Agbogbo Mafia of the Asogli State, Togwe Afede, has hit back at critics who say he only attended 16% of meetings of the Council of State, hence does not deserve the 365,000 cities as Gracia he returned to the state. In an exclusive interview with Joy News, the revered chief said, on the contrary, he has been very active at the Council of State. The former Council of State member was applauded on social media for returning his ex which he described as inappropriate. But what many see as patriotic gesture has equally generated some criticism. So what does he make of the backlash? He spoke to us. You know, I was filing my tax returns towards the end of last year. And I received tax receipts from uh, the GRA. That showed that some reductions were effected from monies paid to me in July that I wasn't aware of. So I decided, wow, let me find out. You know, of course, I was having my own financial because at the time for all responsibilities. So I thought, wow, this is great news. I've got some money in. But I decided to find out where the money was coming from. You know, so I first went to my bankers to confirm the money was there. But it was described generally as salary as gratia. And I didn't know what that meant. I decided to probe and understand where it was coming from. So I found that a chunk of that money was in respect of as gratia. Okay, that was due me. And that was Three hundred and sixty five thousand Ghana cities plus. Of course, my joy turned sadness because I knew there was no way mm. I wanted to spend that kind of money. I was very surprised about the sheer quantum of money that I was going to be paid. And I thought that for three for four years work, that in all honesty was part time work. You know. I did not think that it merited this amount of extra reward after we have enjoyed monthly, you know, salaries. Of course, the other privileges, whether I enjoyed them or not, is neither here nor there, but they were supposed to be there. You know, some free medical care for those who wanted it and which I didn't enjoy. You know, but I thought the salaries were more than enough. So I decided right and then that there was no way I could spend that money. That money must go back to government, you see. There may be good reason to pay S. Gratia, you know, uh, awards or end of service awards to certain categories of government workers, public workers. For example, parliamentarians may have to leave whatever they were doing mm. to serve the nation for a period, okay? So if they will who no more return to parliament, there may be the need mm. to give some end of service benefits. How much should be given is subject to, you know, um, um, a bit of analysis. Togbe Afede further noted that the number of people nominated by the president to be on a council of state is much to be desired. He says it makes it difficult for the body to be independent. Council of State's work is part-time work. 
by mostly retired citizens. Is I'm saying, you know, patterns of state work should not take you away from what you already have been doing. I was shocked that uh, I was very shocked that Mr. Padomochi, of all people, who knew me very, very well, was a frequent visitor to my office many years ago. Knew how hard I work, okay, and. Uh, always commended the quality of my work. I recall when I was talking about Ghana in 2003, about the way they were, you know, um, determining, you know, uh, interest rates, mm -hmm. the effects of which we are still seeing today. You know, he, he got very interested and tried to host Bound Ghana and I in a national TV debate. Of course, the two invitations, Bound Ghana declined. So I did it alone. So he knew me very well. Surprising that he, of all people, and I don't want to go into details, would be the one to, you know, want to criticize me. But why am I not surprised? Because he had done something similar before. When I was fighting Ejepa, he granted an interview to the Minister of Finance and sought to denigrate me even in that interview by saying that I was an employee of Kenny Furiata. When I drew his attention, he apologized. That no, 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 he knew I was a founder. Of data bank. I said, then why do you present it as if I was an employee of Kenny Furiata? You know, again, when we were having a debate about, you know, uh, the referendum yeah. that had to be aborted, he again tried to criticize me. He's surprised that he of all people, when I say he of all people, you will be surprised. He will, he will know why I'm saying I didn't expect that from he of all people. But unfortunately, some people live by, uh, you know, uh, uh, focus on their stomachs in the kind of things that they do. So, given my recent experience, I would say I'm not too surprised. A billboard belonging to the LGBTQR plus community mounted on the Tamamotoe has been pulled down after the Ghana sponsors of the anti LGBTQR plus bill in Parliament issued a 24-hour ultimatum to the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Ekufo Dampari, to pull down billboard because it was promoting the activities of homosexuals. The Jan billboard was mounted in commemoration of the Gay Pride Month, which falls in June each year. The billboard had the group's rainbow colors with an inscription promoting saying. So how does this uh, LGBT community react to this development? Alex Donko is the president of the Ghana LGBT community and joins us on the telephone lines with a reaction. Um, uh, Alex, uh, if you can hear me, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, okay, so we'll return to that particular story uh, later on because we're having difficulties in reaching Alex now. As the world battles to overcome COVID-19 pandemic, countries continue to search for remedies to the viral disease which is wreaking havoc on economies and Ghana is no exception. In order to complement efforts aimed at finding a local antidote to COVID-19, the COVID-19 National Trust Fund has released an amount of 1,837,000 Ghana City to the Center for Plant Medicine Research, Bampon Equipim, to support further research work on two herbal products of the center. Tasha Michelle has small in the following report. The two products, Immonium and Ampofort, are among other products being developed by the center to ensure people have strong immune system to fight COVID-19. Speaking at the signing of the fund donation agreement ceremony at the Jubilee House, chairperson of the trust fund, Justice Retired Sophia Kufu, indicated that being a living witness to the efficacy of herbal products, she believes that the money, when used judiciously, will go a long way to help Ghana fight the virus through herbal medicine. The role of plant medicine in the health delivery system in Ghana has gradually improved and the Center for Plant Medicine Research has played a pivotal role in the field since its establishment in 1975, as I have witnessed. It is in consideration of the innate national value of the work of the center that the COVID-19 National Trust Fund deems it appropriate to support its request for financial support for further de 
to further develop these two products and collaborate with the center in any other relevant potential research initiative aimed at discovering more efficacious local solutions to the health challenges we face as a country, particularly in view of the COVID-19 global health pandemic. She was, however, concerned the great deal of goodwill and enthusiasm exhibited by the general public in donating to the fund earlier has dwindled, resulting in it becoming virtually empty due to the assumption that COVID-19 was over. Sophia Kufu therefore reiterated the need for corporate entities, religious bodies, individuals and other social groups to continue to donate to the fund. It is necessary to note, however, that the great deal of goodwill that was exhibited towards the trust fund by the public and the enthusiasm with which they responded to the appeal by His Excellency the President Anadu Dankwa Akufuado for support in the fight against the COVID-19 has waned steadily and very significantly with donations to the trust fund dwindling month after month. We have now reached a critical point where the general public and potential contributors have unfortunately fallen under the misapprehension that COVID-19 is over. And it is most likely that support and resource flow to the trust fund will further reduce in the foreseeable future. We at the trust fund will ensure that whatever resources remain available to, the, to us will be prudently utilized for the purposes for which the trust fund was established. Presidential advisor on health, Dr. Anthony Insiasari said, the country is on course to developing vaccines, including a malaria vaccine, urging the center to make good use of the fund and also ensure the country reaps from the results. The hidden agenda is to use mRNA to produce together with BioNTech to produce malaria vaccines, which are very crucial for this country, and also TB vaccines. The way that we are going of the, of the president's commitment and the government's commitment putting out uh, $25 million, and with support from, the, for, from, from our partners, especially I'll mention GIZ and also uh, EU and USAID, we will achieve this two years short term target that we set ourselves. And Tasha Bichel's reports read to you. So let's return to our earlier story where a billboard belonging to the LGBT community has been pulled down along the Tema motorway. We've been joined on the line by Alex Donko, who is a president of the LGBT Right Ghana. Now, Alex, thank you for your time. The billboard we discussed about yesterday has been pulled down. What do you make of it? Um, thank you so much for having me, and thanks, um, thanks to all your listeners, too, for the moment. Um, with regards to the billboard and its removal, uh, we see it as um, we see it as, as, as really a criminal act of um, taking a billboard that was legally, um, which legally went through all the processes in erecting it, and. And the message on the billboard wasn't one that was criminal in any, in any shape or form. And for that matter, its removal is one that we, we believe is, 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 is criminal and for that matter, we'll be taking legal action. Um, you, you see it as criminal. criminal. Um, on, on what basis do you see it so? On, on the basis that, on the basis that we have the right freedom of expression, and we express this using the billboard, and the message on the billboard wasn't in any shape or form criminal. And so for people to put laws into their own hands and then remove a billboard that, was, that went to due process in it being erected means that it, 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 it it has it has faulted on our our uh, on, on our rights you know, as individuals in the country and the right to expression and for that matter those who did that have 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 have, have um, uh, uh, faulted in in that process and for that matter we be taking legal action. 
You, you, you said he went through, through the right processes. Uh, uh, educate Sorry, me on this right process. Which assembly approved it and which officer approved it? So, like we, we, we've been mentioning, we gave this particular contract to an advertising company that is legally registered and has, and has gone through all the processes in getting that done. So the process or the, 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 the billboard was, or the contract was given to an advertising company to do that. Mm. And what's the name of this advertising company? I don't think I want to disclose that yet. Okay, but which assembly uh, also gave the permission? I'm sure you should know since you are the, the one who gave the contract out. Like I'm saying, it was, it was uh, a, a process that was given to an advertising company and we are planning on taking legal action for it. So I'm sure once that process kicks that um, all this information is. So who will your legal action be against? We... Yesterday, Honorable from George and his, uh, the, the group from, 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 from uh, um, the Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights were there, and then the FSC said they were going to take the billboard down if the police doesn't take it down. And so we believe that it is them who went ahead and then took that billboard down. All because right. we haven't had the police say anything that they're taking any billboard down. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm grateful for your time. Now, uh, moving on to other stories. The Ghana Boundary Commission and the National Boundary Commission of Côte d'Ivoire, together with other stakeholders, are planting trees along the River Tano in commemoration of Green Ghana Day and also to climax activities marking this year's African Border Day. The Tano River serves as a boundary line between Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire, and the event is aimed at educating communities along the river about the importance of protecting it. Maxwell Agbaba is at Elubo and joins us live. Maxwell, what's been happening at your end? All right, so um, the story is that the Ghana Boundary Commission and the National Boundary Commission of Côte d'Ivoire, together with other stakeholders, are planting trees along the river tunnel in commemoration of the Green Ghana Day today. And also to climax activities marking this year's African Border Day. The Tano River, as we know, serves as a boundary line between Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire, and the event is aimed at educating communities along the river about the importance of protecting it. Maxwell Agbaba is at Elubo now and uh, joins us uh, live. Max, if you can hear me, uh, what has been happening at your end? Well, so you, you are still watching the Joy News Desk. We are trying to connect to Maxwell, who is in Elubo now, so we can bring you up to speed with what's happening on the Elubo, um, uh, the border of Ghana and Ivory Coast around River Tano area. Uh, we know that the Boundary Commission of Ghana and that of Ivory Coast are undertaking that activity. We'll take a quick break. When we come, we'll bring you the latest on that and other stories. Stay with us. At your end. So, um, very close to. Um, so, this is a border town. Um, like currently, yeah, in the way, in the way is in um, Ivory Coast. In Ivory Coast, where events are actually taking place to climax the African border day. And we have um, officials from the Ghana Boundary Commission um, here with us, and we also have their counterpart from the Ivory Coast um, Boundary Commission, Côte d'Ivoire Boundary Commission, um, also here. A lot of activities are planned and lined up for today. Um, but what the Ghana Boundary Commission has been doing um, is that they, together with their counterparts um, here in Côte d'Ivoire, have been planting trees along River Tano, and this is actually to um, commemorate uh, the Green Ghana Day initiative. So you can say that you're using uh, um, one stone to actually kill two birds, so one planting trees along um, the river um, Tano, which actually serves as a boundary um, between Côte d'Ivoire and then Ghana. And currently here, we are in way here um, in Côte d'Ivoire, where there's an event to actually climax the African border day. But we're lucky to have with us here 
Yeah, the chief executive um, officer of the Ghana Boundary Commission is going to tell us more um, about this event and the purpose of, uh, and its purpose actually. Let's get closer to him and speak to Major General Yuma um, chief executive officer of the Ghana Boundary Commission. Uh, Major General, you're welcome to do us. Mm. We want to find out what today's activities um, are all about. But earlier we were at River Tunnel where um, the Ghana Boundary Commission and its counterparts from Côte d'Ivoire planted trees. Uh, you want to tell us the significance of that? Today has been set aside as African Border Day. Actually, the day is on the 7th of June. Let me mention that the initiative of the National Boundary Commission of Côte d'Ivoire, uh, they requested that Ghana for the first time should celebrate the activity with them. We should have a joint celebration. And this has been held in the whole of Africa because it's the very first time that two countries within the African region are coming together to celebrate the day. So these events are coming on as uh, part of the celebration of the African Border Day, which has been set aside by the African Union to celebrate borders across countries and to ensure that the peace and security along the borders are maintained. And then also to ensure cross-border cooperation among the countries within the African continent. The other aspect we need to mention is that this activity came on to coincide with the Green Ghana activity. So since the Ghana Boundary Commission was part of the initiative of um, the Green Ghana uh, initiative uh, launched by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, we told the Ivorians that we wanted to incorporate that program. That is why you found the Ivorians joining us in the morning to, uh, to, to assist us in the plant of trees to commemorate the Green Ghana Day. This has been a significant day because, again, within all the activities of the Green Ghana in the country, the one being held in the Western region has tend to be more international. And the international dimension of it, irrespective of being the African Border Day, has given it a, a high aspect so far as the activities is concerned. And we're also very happy to have the regional minister um, for the Western region joining us with, uh, with the MC for Jomuro and the regional uh, members of the regional coordinating uh, council and the regional security council and district security council. So we are hoping that the activities that are going to follow will be a very uh, memorable uh, occasion for both countries. But, but finally, we know the Ghana Co Boundary Commission has been doing um, some works in Togo, Burkina Faso, along the boundary line up there. You want to tell us what we've done so far on that? Yeah, so far we, we have a number of initiatives that have been lined up for us. So the delegation from uh, Côte d'Ivoire just arrived here um, at the grounds uh, for the event so you can see some personnel from the Côte d'Ivoire National Boundary Commission. We can continue with Major Jim. Yeah, so we have a number of activities that have been discussed with the National Boundary Commission of the Côte d'Ivoire which I'll be, I'll be listing them during my speech but I think the most important thing is that we're going to form joint committees that are going to ensure that both our land and maritime borders are secured and we do not have problems so far as our boundaries are concerned and also to start the reaffirmation of part of our land boundaries. Thank you very much. So that was like, yeah. So you just had um, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Boundary Commission, Major General Yuma Dokutia, um, telling us the purpose of today's um, all important um, event. Let's see if we can speak to. Um, okay, so I have the Director of Operations. What? Director of Operations, Ghana Boundary Commission, General Wilson, uh, is here with me. Yeah. Um, so let's see if. Yeah, so we have the Western Regional uh, Minister, but not sure that um, also. Yeah. Let's see if we can speak to him and find out from him um, what a tree planting activity that happened earlier. Uh, earlier, uh, you know, the significance you know, of that. Uh, Honorable, you're welcome to join us. Morning. Yeah, you're welcome to join us. Um, earlier, we were at the banks of River Tunnel uh, to plant trees to 
you know, commemorate uh, Green Ghana Day. And we're here today, uh, right now, uh, for, the, for the climax of activities of the African Border Day. Um, can you tell us about the significance of both events? Um, I believe that the first one is, a, is about the Africa Border Day. Um, borders are important to ensure sovereignty. But they are also. Okay, so we'll continue with the Western Regional Minister shortly. But you can see the delegation from the Cote d'Ivoire Boundary Commission also just arrived here um, on the ground, exchanging pleasantries with the Western Regional Minister. Let's go back to him. Yeah, Minister. Yes, so as you are aware, uh, borders actually ensure sovereignty. But in Africa in particular, borders were created arbitrarily between two families, same families. And we believe that um, as Africans, we should make sure that these borders become points of opportunity instead of becoming points of barriers and conflict. So we are celebrating Africa Border Day with our kings on the other side of the river, Tano, which is the Agores. And we want to let everybody know that we are one people working hard for a common good. But the same day also happened to be the Green Ghana Day. So we decided to celebrate it with our brothers from the Iberian side. So this morning we went to plant trees at Elibo and it's been very successful. So we are coming to this side to see other activities they are also doing and then we can also support them together. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. The Ghana Hubs Network has organized a nationwide hackathon for innovators and entrepreneurs to build an inclusive database system application. The hub revealed an ability availability of data on startups and innovation hubs across the country is a major challenge in policy formulation, investment and solutions. There's more in this report. Manager at Ghana Hubs Network GIZ Capacity Strengthening Program said the lack of data on startups has created the need to fashion a database system. Simon Asari believes this would help improve Ghanaian entrepreneurship and the ecosystem. He was speaking at the 2022 nationwide hackathon held at Hapa Space in the Ashanti region. So we need a central place where we can actually get data to inform on policy and also um, the development of relevant programs for the innovators and entrepreneurs and even the innovative spaces that we have. Majority of the things that we, we talk about are probably just mere guest work, right? Because Where's the data? You have this, what, what shows? So um, a system to actually harness the various wonderful things our innovative spaces are doing across the country and also um, connect and build synergies across the country because we have over 52 innovative spaces under the Ghana Hubs network. Startups and innovation hubs play an important role in the country's economy through the creation of jobs. But data in this space is, however, set to be fragmented. Director of Gender at the Ghana Hubs Network wants the government to create more opportunities for the innovation space. Janat Isifu is Director for Gender at the Ghana Hubs Network. My suggestion to government is to um, provide more support opportunities to the innovation space because government cannot be everywhere monitoring what is going on underground at every part of the country even though they have the ability to do that. But we already have Ghana Hubs Network we already have hubs across all the system regions of Ghana. So it is important that um, government provide some support in terms of incentives, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of financial support to these hubs to be able to continuously support. The 2022 Ghana Hubs Network Nationwide Hackathon is divided into four zones. The Ashanti zone included entrepreneurs and innovators from the western north, Ahafo, Bono, Bono East and Ashanti regions. Host for the 2022 Ashanti Region Hackathon said the creation of a centralized database system will attract more investors. Douglas Israel Boatin is manager for Harper Space. As a business support organization, we are excited to host the hackathon for Zone 4. We believe that um, as a network, it's long overdue to have such a centralized database to assist stakeholders to be able to access um, the database of innovation hubs. 
Anderson Okain is one of the innovators who participated in the Ghana Hubs Network 2022 Hackathon. Yeah, I decided to join the Hackathon because I wanted to gain experience in the tech world. Because nowadays, if you are applying for a job, majority of these tech business require that you have certain experience. Now, Managing Director of Talo Oil Ghana, Wissam Alman Theory, has assured that Ghana will be at the heart of the operations of the firm following its merger with Capricorn Energy. Talo last week reached an agreement with this UK rival to merge and create a leading African energy company. Mr. Almond Theory expects the combined group to deliver substantial benefits for shareholders and local employees. Transaction provides shareholders with a resultant leading African energy company with significantly increased financial strength and balance sheet stability and um, a whole list of uh, investment opportunities in Ghana, in Egypt, which is where Capricorn's production asset base is, uh, as well as all around the continent. So it, it provides an attractive return over the long term in the name of a series of investment opportunities um, coming uh, for the shareholder for, for years to come. It also provides shareholders with some central synergies. It allows rationalization in the corporate center, which then in turn allows an even greater focus and agility to get after some of these opportunities as, uh, as, uh, as shareholders would want to maximize their return. And that's your business update for now. My name is Daryl Kwao. Back to Brace with more of uh, the news. Now we are talking sports, Brace. Thank you very much, Daryl. Uh, and the man himself is in the studio with latest on the game uh, involving Ghana Black Stars and uh, which team? Japan. Japan. Yeah, so. And uh, what's the latest? Well, if you are aware, um, the Black Stars have been in Japan, mm. I think, for some days now for the Kirin Cup 2022. Mm. The tournament had not been held for some time now, but then they decided to bring it back. So it involves Ghana, Japan, um, Tunisia, and then Chile. Earlier in the day, um, Chile lost to Tunisia. So Tunisia have booked their place in the final. Okay. But in the Blasters thing, <laughs> surprisingly, the Blasters went down in the 29th minute of the game. Okay. So it was 1-0 until I think the 40th minute where um, Jordan Ayu got the equalizer. But then shortly after the equalizer, the um, Jap um, Japan side also got back in front to make it 2-1. So Ghana so, considered again? Yeah. So at the moment, it's 2-1 in favor of Japan. And as it stands, um, the Black Stars could be missing out on a place in the final to face Tunisia, which means they could, they'll be playing Chile in the th uh, for a place in the third, third and fourth. Well, but what are we playing? Which half? First or? Um, it's already first half, 45 yeah. minutes gone. So we have the, the second 45 to play. But Ghanaian shouldn't really be downhearted because, as you already know, there are a lot of um, absentees in the, in the camp. So many players are out um, due to. Um, they are sorting out their future with their club or contractual issues. Yeah. So probably we are playing with the French side, um, quite a French number of players in there. So. But we are not done. We will, we will win still this have, game. I yeah, have faith. Yes, yes. Oh, we will win this that's game. That's quite fair for you. Ah, no, we will win this game. It's just 2-1, just yeah? yeah? Against us. Yes. First half. Yes. Don't worry. We will we'll equalize and win. Thank you very much uh, you. for coming with that. Uh, this is uh, the Joy News Desk. Uh, there is more news on myjawonline.com that uh, you can uh, go and get more news and information from there. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Have a wonderful morning. We'll meet on midday.